Well, this is, uh, this is the last uh, NOAA sharing. Obviously, we're not going to be able to um, finish up the whole story. We, we actually got chapters left. <laughs> but um, I'm going to do, for lack of a better word, and then not, that's not a good word, summary or synopsis, um, what I believe, you know, is that I, I'm going to try to bring it all together. And uh, sometimes that's better than all the listening all along because you get it in pieces. And sometimes from the, in between the classes, when you come back, it's hard to fit everything together. So mm -hmm. I'm hoping we can do that um, in this sharing. <coughs> and so we're in Genesis. In Genesis chapter 6 is where we're going to start um, today. <clears throat> and verse 6. <clears throat> And it repented the Lord that he had made man on the earth, and it grieved him at his heart. So when I, when I search the scriptures, I'm not just randomly reading what's the next story. or When I find something like this, it grieved him at his heart, then that's undoing to me. It just undoes me. <clears throat> but I can't just sit around and be undone. I want to know exactly why you're grieved, Lord. And, and the, here's the thought. We look at it and we go, okay, it grieved him at his heart, but that was a long time ago, and that was those people, and they messed up. <clears throat> and um, a lot of times it doesn't impact us. I mean, to me, if I found somebody say I was just walking, you know, here in Ireland and one of you were walking along with me and you told me a story a long time ago of something that grieved you at your heart, uh, I would remember that and I would try to uh, be sensitive to the Lord in a manner that would be sensitive to you, that I would not grieve that again, you know, especially if it's someone I care about, but it should be for anybody. And um, so this, these, this part, this part, you know, remember at our beginning when we were sharing this, um, we used another translation and, uh, and it said, uh, and the Lord said, uh, I am sorry that I made man. I'm sorry that I made you. I'm sorry that I made you. That's, what, that's the way it was worded. I'm sorry that I made you. All right, oh my God, so he's grieved at his heart over that he made us, okay? So that's that he made me, you know, so I can't lay that on everybody else, that he made me. So I got to, I'm sorry, if I'm grieving your heart, I got I to gotta find out why and how and what's going on here. So I want to really make this session about that, and, but we're going to go through an abundance of scriptures that are here. Um, and let me make sure here we go. <coughs> yeah, let me double check here. Mm-hmm. Okay, so let's go back to verse 1 and 2. <clears throat> and it came to pass when men began to multiply on the face of the earth and daughters were born unto them, that the sons of God saw the daughters of men that they were fair and they took them wives of all which they chose. All right, so the f usually the only thing that gets us about those verses 
is we want to know who these sons of God are. We're going to, you know, we're all for that. Oh, it's a great mystery. And oh, it's some. But the Spirit of God, when I came to him and said, help me to understand what grieved, what grieved you, what grieved the Father, what grieved the Son, <clears throat> he said, <clears throat> That's not the big deal that's in this verse. He said the fact that he had made man, the very beginning, Genesis, that he had made this animal after its kind, and these after its kind, and everything after its kind, and after its kind, and after its kind, and then he gets to the last day, and he makes man in his image after his kind. And he said, and it says there, every time he made something after his kind, it says that he, it was good, and it blessed, he blessed them. He blessed it. He blessed it. It was good to him, and he blessed it. So what he told me here was that um, man is seed is supposed to bring forth after his kind, and now there's a mixture. Mm -hmm. It's two different kinds, mm -hmm. and that it's not the pure seed of Christ. It's not the pure seed of what he wanted. Uh, the order has been corrupted. The order has been corrupted of his flow, of his, of his heart of trying to bring forth Christ in us. And one kind has joined to another. So uh, they will now no longer be bringing forth where God can say this is good and this is, you know, it's a, and this is, this is a spiritual reality. This is, something that we have to know in the heart of God in relationship to his son because that's where the seed is supposed to reside male or female bond or free black white it doesn't matter it's the seed that matters we want Christ to be in us and to grow in us so um, well, let's look at Genesis uh, 6, 11 now. The earth, was all, the earth also was corrupt before God, and the earth was filled with violence. And God looked upon the earth, and behold, it was corrupt, for all flesh had corrupted his way upon the earth. And his way, very simply, was that we be after his kind that we be his seed, that it be, and we know now that that is Christ in us. But, you know, when I read Genesis and I read him making that, and you can, you can do that, you can go back and reread it, it's just constantly saying after his kind, after his kind, after its kind, after its kind. And then he said, God said, Father said, Holy Spirit, Son, they said, let us make something after our kind. So, with this corruption, we'll, we'll see. Uh, but with this corruption, and this is where you get verse um, 6 and 7, so well, let's just go ahead and read that again. And it repented the Lord that he had made man on the earth, and it grieved him at his heart. What? See, here's the key. What? grieved him at his heart. It wasn't sin. It was that they, he had corrupted his way of us being the bride of Christ, if you will, getting one after his kind, us being joined with him in that spirit, one after his kind. And I, when I saw that, it just tore at my heart because we're so sin conscious that we can't even see the greater things to God. 
as far as sin right now, Jesus has already died. If you sin again, he doesn't have to go and get climb back on the cross and die again. That's settled. But what's not settled is getting one after his kind. And the Lord said, I will... See, it, it repented the Lord. It grieved him at his heart. And the Lord said, because there's not... There's no longer a chance of getting one after his kind in that situation. So the Lord said, I will destroy man whom I have created to be in my image. It doesn't say that, though, does it? It doesn't say, I will destroy man whom I have created to be. In. I wrote that in my notes because that's what he's talking about. And we'll see that more and more as we go. I will... I will destroy man whom I have created to be in our image, is what I put, from the face of the earth, both man and beast and the creeping things and the fowls of the air, for it repenteth me that I have made them. I am sorry that I made them. So I wrote, he made these things to bring forth after his kind, but since they are not, he will destroy them. They're... You know, there's a little thing I wrote. I, I wrote this, flesh multiplies, but it cannot bear fruit. And what's what, what I mean is this fallen situation now, it, it can multiply. Flesh can multiply. And that's, that, isn't that the feel you get from the Noah story that flesh has multiplied? And it cannot bear his image. It cannot bear fruit. It cannot bear fruit because it cannot bear original fruit. Man and a woman bringing forth after his kind. God and the bride bringing forth after his kind. It's corrupted. It's corrupted. And, um, and that verse that says, you know, violence, they're filled with violence and have corrupted his ways. Um, <clears throat> we'll see it. At, when we get to the very end of this, we'll see this in the New Testament. And we'll see that the, the violence refers to all these actions that are happening on the earth in the flesh by a corrupted seed that is not like him at all. It's not in his image. It's not in the image of the Lamb at all. It's nothing like the image of the Lamb. Nothing like it. It is violent in its dealings. So when I wrote that he made these things to bring forth after his kind, but since they did not, he will destroy them, Jesus said a simple statement that we probably pass over. He said, salt is good, but if it loses its savor, its purpose, it's is fit for the dung heap. Genesis uh, <clears throat> verse 5. <clears throat> and God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. And I wrote down because I felt it at the moment this is killing him because it's not him. This is grieving his heart. This is, you know, God saw that, er, that the wickedness of man was great on the earth and every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. And I just saw this is killing him because it's not his seed because it's not after his kind, because it doesn't have his image. Verse 9 and 10. <clears throat> but now, now he's going he's gonna to set about to change that order. These are the generations of Noah. Noah was a just man and perfect in his generation. And Noah walked with God. And Noah begat three sons, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. So Noah is righteous. And if he's joined to righteous, then he can bring forth after his kind. 
But remember, we're not really talking about righteous, except for righteous being the fact that he wants something after his kind. If he gets his kind, all of the attributes and all of the things come with that. You know, I mean, if, if a cow has a cow, it's not going to bring forth a pig. Well, I mean, it's not. It's going to have all the attributes already there. You don't have to say, be a, be a cow. Stop acting like a pig. You see what I'm saying? It's there. Most Christians are working on all the attributes. And they're not even thinking about giving him what he wants, one after his kind. Verse 18, but, but with thee will I establish my covenant. But with thee will I establish my covenant. And thou shalt come into the ark, thou and thy sons and thy wife and thy sons' wives with thee. He establishes this covenant with those after his kind. with those after his kind. Paul said, not all Israel is of Israel. Not all Israel. Not all of Israel is really Israel. Because it's not just to be born Jewish or whatever. It is to, it's to have that nature. You know, I'm going to just be bold and just say this. Maybe it'll shock you and help you. Not all Christians are of Christ, of Him in nature and in way. So if that is even possibly true, is it possible that the Lord Himself who died for us could look down here and be grieved at His heart? He may see great teaching and great doctrines and we can write great books and make great videos, but where is the actual manifestation of Christ in His nature and spirit? And believe me, the New Testament is full. You, if anyone dared to just go through, in fact, that was y'all's homework. <laughs> it was the homework I gave you so that when we get back, go through and find where Christ is, where it doesn't just say it's Christ, but it could, uh, it could not come out of us in our old state. And if it comes out of us in our new state and we're dead, then guess what? <laughs> That's him. <clears throat> so let's look at verse 20 now. This is talking about on the ark uh, or into the ark. Of fowls after their kind and of cattle after their kind, of every creeping thing of the earth after its kind, two of every sort shall come unto thee to keep them alive. Noah had to gather at the, in this verse two of each kind, right? They had to gather two. But they had to be of the same kind. Is that significant or is that just, you know, you know, well, we say, yeah, it's significant. It would be good to, you know, get two cows and two horses. But what if after its kind is the same heart that he had up here when he made everything after its kind and then said, let us make man. And now he's saying, I'm grieved. I'm sorry I made you. Chapter 7, verse 13. In the selfsame day entered Noah and Shem and Ham and Japheth, the sons of Noah, and Noah's wife and the three wives of his sons with them into the ark, they and every beast after his kind, and all the cattle after their kind, and every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth after his kind, every fowl after its kind, and every bird of every sort. Could you not just say, you don't have to say after his kind, just say you know, say it once. He got he brought two of everything. 
you won't, don't even have to have this kind. Two of everything that's equal or whatever. But he keeps saying after its kind, after its kind. And ringing in my heart is when they made all of this stuff after its kind and then God let us, let us, not, you know, the Father or Jesus alone or the Holy Spirit. Hey, I got a good idea, fellas. Let us. Make man after our kind, in our image, after our likeness. I think it's what grieved him, and I think that the, this is big to him, that now he's bringing stuff onto the ark that he feels he can make a covenant with, and he can separate them from that, and that he's seeking to... He can't change what, what we've already done. You know what I mean? But he can bring us into him. Yeah. And he did bring us into him. You know that, don't you? We were in him in death and we were in him in resurrection. That's our hope, right? That's our hope for being after his kind. So I wrote, only those of the same kind enter into the ark. You will either follow the order and seek to be after his kind, or you'll corrupt it. Now, I said that because I wanted to get that across. But the truth of the matter is, I think, the only thing that's going to get anyone to follow that order would be not to follow the order, but to, to follow his heart and say, I don't want your heart grieved anymore. I would like Christ formed in me totally apart from me. I don't want to think about me, but that's what you want, one of your kind That doesn't mean we don't seek the Lord, but you understand what I'm saying at this moment, at this time, I'm saying. I'm not saying that, you know, in an hour, you're not saying, Lord, I, Father, I want Christ formed in me. We do. All of us do. But if it ever hits you in the face, that verse that said that, that it grieved him at his heart, and he said, I am sorry I made you. You would say, Father, then form your Son in me. Form your Son. Paul talked about bearing about in the body the dying of the Lord. He didn't say bearing about in, the, in your doctrine. He didn't say bearing about in your mind. You bear about in your mind the dying of the Lord. He said, bearing about in your body. He said in, uh, in, in uh, Philippians, that was in 2 Corinthians, he says in Philippians that Christ may be made manifest in my mortal flesh, not in my words as I express that. Father, you want your son, a living son. Have you ever seen a, a picture of Jesus and it was all really just the whole gospel of John in little bitty letters and it's it was you know I, I've seen that it's like it looks like Jesus from a distance and you get up and it's the whole gospel of John and you take down the picture and you hug it and you say this is the Jesus I worship <laughs> the scripture Jesus but I see him he wants others to see him. Yeah, by life. Violence is not a thing of that, that, that's in that picture. <laughs> Violence is a thing that's in us, and um, it is contrary to his kind. They say the you know, we always say the lion, the lion and the lamb lay down together. Well, it never says that in the scriptures. How many of you know that? Good. <coughs> it says the, the lamb and the wolf, right? Yeah. 
<clears throat> but then it says the lion and something else will lay down. The point of it is they're all laying down. They all have the same spirit of a lamb. They're not eating one another. <laughs> they're all laying down together. You see the spirit of that lamb in all of them. One kind. You say, well, don't mix those guys. Oh, no, you do want to mix those guys. In fact, that's how they all got that way. Amen. <laughs> that's the only way they got that way. All right, verse 21. And all flesh died. Can anybody clap? Yes. <laughs> Yay! Yeah. And all flesh died that moved upon the earth, both of fowl and of cattle and of the beasts and of every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth and every man. What died? Multiplying flesh. That flesh that is not his kind. Okay? So you're, you're half in and half out of the ark. <laughs> you're multiplying flesh. It's going down. Thank you, Lord. But in him, you're going up, as it were. <clears throat> Let's go to Genesis 8. This will be the deepest into Genesis 8 we got. <laughs> I think we barely got into verse 1 and 2. <clears throat> In verse 16, Genesis 8, 16. Go forth out of the ark, thou and thy wife and thy sons and thy sons' wives with thee. Bring forth with thee every living thing. Remember everything that was flesh that moveth on the earth, died? Bring forth every living thing that is with thee of all flesh that is living, both of fowl and cattle and of every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth, that they may breed abundantly in the earth and be fruitful and multiply upon the earth. When he first made everything, he not only blessed them, each category as he did it, he made them and then over the category, he said it was good and he blessed them and he said, go multiply. Amen. More after his kind. Yes, Lord. Okay. Not more Christians. Not more of Christianity. More of Christ. I, again, I'm not against Christians or Christianity. I, that's great. But if the Father's heart, if God's heart is grieved because he wants one after his kind and we ended up looking something other than that, then my heart is, I want to give you that which is Christ because he is the one that's after his kind. The express image of God, it says in Hebrews. <clears throat> so God reinstates the order and he starts over with a new creation he starts over and he, he says go and multiply and he blessed them and this whole thing starts going and you can see that in in 9 1 genesis 9 1 <clears throat> and god blessed noah amen god blessed noah amen and God blessed Noah and his sons and said unto them, Be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth. Be fruitful is different than multiplying. It is the fruit of life. It is the fruit of the being that is within you. It is the fruit of Christ. We'll deal with that. That'll be toward the end. Verse 8 and 9 of Genesis 9. God spake unto Noah and to his sons with him, saying, And behold, I establish my covenant with you and with your seed after you. With you and with what comes out of you. With you and with what comes out of you. What comes out of you? 
your seed, Christ. That which is after his kind. It's an ongoing. Remember when we started, we, we started, one of the first things we said was we talked about Matthew 13 and we talked about the environment and the environment was, was different. The seed was exactly the same. The seed of Christ is exactly the same. Everybody gets the same seed. But some ground is by the wayside. Some ground has rocks and stuff in it. Some ground has thorns that choke the, the word out of it. And some is good ground, meaning that it is totally prepared itself for the seed, not holding on to old things and growing stuff that you shouldn't have growing in your life or, or just by the wayside and watching everybody go by and say, hey, it's a good day, you know. People stop and share Jesus with me. It's, it's the difference between being fruitful and not being fruitful. What kind of ground you are? Okay, well, what kind of ground then? After his kind. So that your seed after you can come forth, which is Christ, bringing forth more, multiplying and bringing forth fruit. So we saw that in, in Matthew 13. What did we see? We saw that the seed was fruitful, not the ground. The ground didn't go, hey, let's bring forth fruit after our kind. More dirt? <laughs> you know, no. No, we got the kind in us. We've got the right kind in us. And, well, let's see. There's this one place that I wanted to see if I put it in here. Yeah. Okay, it's just scriptures. But let's, let's now try to start gathering this into the heart of the, the grieved one and, and start ministering back to that heart instead of always getting him to minister to us. Genesis 1, let's just go through this, okay? Let's, in, let's brand this into our minds. Verse 21, we'll just start there. <clears throat> Genesis 1. And God created great whales and every living creature that moveth, which the waters brought forth abundantly after their kind. After their kind. And every winged fowl after his kind. And God saw that it was good and God blessed them. You see that? Mm -hmm. This is, okay. <clears throat> so God is just like a, a creative artist, right? That's all, that's all he really is. He drew something and he liked it. Is that it? I mean, is that, the, is that the extent? My God, I hope not. I mean, I appreciate good art, but, you know, he's wanting more. And don't forget that. <laughs> you didn't see that. <clears throat> Be fruitful, let's see, God blessed them at saying, be fruitful and multiply and fill. Fill, fill, fill up and fill up. Fill up within and fill up without. Why do we do these, these things? Why do we spend, I mean, if we counted just the money that was spent in this room, both sides of the, the pond, it'd be incredible. You could have, you could have gone to, Hawaii. <laughs> but no, you came here. How crazy is that? And why didn't we just make it easy and make, you know, these three come to us? <laughs> because... <laughs> Because 
because this is where the Lord called us and this is where it keeps happening. I'm telling you. And and let me ask you, is it all because of Steve being here? No, no, no. And let me double emphasize that. No, 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 no. It's because of the seed and it's because of, of God's heart for, for what he started here a hundred years ago, over a hundred years ago, but that's a long story, so we won't get into it. <coughs> Be fruitful and multiply and fill. That's where I stopped. See, in my Bible, because it's on my iPad, I can highlight in red and then just literally stop. Be fruitful and multiply and fill. Okay. And we go, well, we get caught up in what you're going to fill and all this stuff. And we don't catch the spirit of the yeah. filling. <clears throat> the waters of the seas and let, let fowl multiply in the earth and... <clears throat> the evening and the morning were the fifth day, and God said, Let the earth bring forth the living creatures after his kind, cattle and creeping things and beasts of the earth after his kind. And it was so. And God made the beasts of the earth after his kind. That's three times in a row. And cattle after his kind, four times, right there in a row. And every living thing that creepeth upon the earth after his kind. Five in a row. And God saw that it was good. I'm telling you, he, this is not just an artistic thing with him, that look what I created. You know. Aren't I talented? His heart is fixed on his son. I'm telling you. His heart is fixed on that. And he wants the seed within us, and he wants us to become after his kind. Conform to the image of his son, it says in Romans. Not, not just walking, not just walking in, you can say this any number of ways, not just walking in carnal Christian doctrine, not just walking in good Christian doctrine, not just walking in deeper life, doctrine, certainly not walking in carnal deeper life <laughs> doctrine, not just walking in Christ crucified realities and saying, I got it, I got it, I got it. It was never meant to be here. And it was never meant to be a thing that's just spelled out clear as day. It's meant to be a lie. Jesus. We say, I gain new life. Mm -hmm. I used to, you know, I used to be a bookworm and stay in the library and read, and now I read the Bible. I got a new life. Uh, you just changed books. <laughs> you know, that's not a new life. He's the new life. Yeah. <clears throat> Verse 26. And God said, Let us make man in our image after our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowls of the air and over uh, the cattle and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. In other words, let this be above in his heart of all other kinds, of whatever kind that he made that was a, image, uh, was a shadow of that. Let this reality be the kind that is above all that. Praise God. I mean, see, you'll see these things if you look into his heart. These things are screaming at us. I'm telling you, they're screaming at us. But we don't stop and say, why, why are you grieved at your heart? What is it that grieves God? Well, I'm sorry that I made you. Then explain it to me. He's eternal. This can't be a one-time, one-shot grieving. If it comes up again, he's going to be grieved again. If it comes up in your life, he's going to be grieved again. Where's my son? Where is the reality of him? Where's the walk? You know? My stepfather was a 
a mean, cruel man who was an alcoholic who beat my mom and beat us, and it was it was worse than just what you would call beatings. It was way worse than all that. It's you know I don't want to I don't want to talk about that. But he said one thing to me when I got saved, and he said it to keep my mouth shut, but he said, if you can't walk the walk, don't talk the talk. <laughs> and I remember going, hmm, <laughs> yeah. I thought, I want this to be a walk. And saw John the Baptist, saw Jesus, doesn't say he's walking or anything, and he said, behold the Lamb of God that taketh away the sin of the world. I know we just shared this. He saw him the next day, and he's walking, and his disciples are with him, and he says, Behold the Lamb of God. And his disciples go, I think we're supposed to walk in this. And they leave, and they... And then Genesis, uh, Revelation 14 says, And everyone that followed, the, all these, or they that followed the Lamb, whithersoever he goeth. Whithersoever is not a, a town in Ireland. Although it could be. <laughs> it is focused on not whithersoever. If he walked into whithersoever, you only go there because you're following the Lamb. And in the end, it's, it's really not following the teaching of the Lamb, is it? It's the life, as it were, forming and and moving the motivation behind our walk. Verse 27, So God created man in his own image, and the image of God created he him. Uh, male and female created he them, and God blessed them. <laughs> there it goes. I mean, he's blessing everything that doesn't, that's not flesh, but when it comes to that which is the opposite of his kind, he's going, I don't want it. I never wanted this. I repent that this came about. This is not what I wanted. Can he look at your life and say, this is not what I wanted? Can you look then back into his heart and say, uh, I am grieving you to your heart? Or do you say, yeah, but I'm a Christian, or I love the Lord, or, you know, he knows my heart. Oh, God, does he know your heart that is deceitfully wicked? You know, we always say that, God knows my heart. And he goes, the Lord knows your heart, it's deceitfully wicked. And you go, I mean, I remember reading that, because I used to say that all the time. God knows my heart, and then I read that in Jeremiah, and I went, oh, boy. <laughs> I guess he does know my heart, and I don't know my heart. I mean, what, what will it take to shake this monkey out of our tree? This, this deception about where, you know, where we are, if something is grieving his heart and it's not Christ and it's not the living thing, because all of this has to do with living things, you know? Living, living. And then when another union happens, another union happens, now it's mixed seed and it's not going to bring forth after its kind anymore, ever, ever. And that's exactly right after that when he said, he looked at man and it deceived, uh, it grieved him. Right after that, when, the, when it was no longer going to be after his kind. So let's, um, <clears throat> let's go to Matthew chapter 1. We're still on the same subject, but let's go to Matthew chapter 1. And verse 1, Matthew 1, 1. The book of the generation of Jesus Christ, the son of David, the son of Abraham. Abraham begat Isaac, and Isaac begat Jacob, and Jacob begat Judas and his brethren. 
Okay, y'all keep reading. Just in your own, don't read out loud. Just look real quick. Keep going. Next verse. Begat. Next verse. Begat. Begat. More begetting. Begat. 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 Okay, that's enough. Uh, let's go down to verse 16. And Jacob begat Joseph, the husband of Mary, of whom was born Jesus, who is called Christ. All right. Um, <clears throat> so this starts off, and, and God made Matthew 1.1 1, 1, the first thing that you read in the Bible. And it says this book is the generation of my kind. That's what it's about. This is the generation of my kind. And so it's, you know, it goes, you know, and all, you know, all of them goes right down, da 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 And then it says, and Jacob begat Joseph, the husband of Mary, of whom was born Jesus, who is called the Christ. And it's saying this is my generation. This brought me forth. This is after my kind. Do you understand? It, it's, I don't know how they all live, but I'm telling you, it's spiritually saying that this is what I want, a generation that will bring me forth. Because we read and we go, why the heck are all these people? I can't even pronounce them. You know? I get bored. God, I get bored. I get bored reading the genealogies. The, or we would say this, I, God, I get bored reading of the generation of Christ. If, let me tell you, you're his body, and you're of that generation. And if your name was in here, would you be bored with reading it? Would you have only your name highlighted? <laughs> then that would be wrong. Yeah. Because we're the generation to bring forth Christ. Yeah. 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 This right here. Could it be? Or are we going to grieve his heart? See what I'm saying? And the, and the Christ, I mean, Mary is in there. And it's, you should hear the, I mean, you should read the whole thing of Mary. And all that she goes through and everything and all the stuff God says. But when it's all done, she's not walking around with no seed saying, Once the angel said to me this, and it is written here in the word of God. And then I did this, and this is the gospel. Let us all know the story. No, she brought forth Jesus. It was an actual Jesus. And we're of that generation. <laughs> I also like uh, verse 18. Now the birth of Jesus Christ was on this wise when, his, when as his mother Mary was espoused to Joseph before they came together, she was found with child of the Holy Ghost. Does the Holy Ghost have anything to do with that? Is he important? But you know, you can you can be filled with the Holy Spirit and focus on gifts. And everybody can know you as the people who are focused on gifts because you're filled with the Holy Spirit. When the purpose of the Spirit of God is to reveal Christ in us. You know? If, he, if, if you, there are nine gifts of the Spirit, if he wants to operate in those, they're his gifts he can operate in. <laughs> you know, if he wants to, yeah, never mind. <clears throat> la, la, la. Okay, so let's go back to Genesis, but this time Genesis chapter 5. Verse 1, this is the book of the generation of Adam. Fasten your seatbelts. 
In the day that God created man in the likeness of God, made he him, male and female, he created them and blessed them and called their name Adam in the day when they were created. And Adam lived 130 years and begat a son in his own likeness after his image and called his name Jedetude. <laughs> Y'all, you just didn't say that? <laughs> J-E-D-A-T-O-O-T. The way it is in my iPad, but probably because I wrote it there. <laughs> All right. My Lord, look at this. The generation, of the, this is the book. It says this is the book of the generations of Adam. You want to be in that line? Well, go with violence. Go with corrupting his way. Go with not being really after his kind in nature. Go with that. How about that? How about grieving God? To his heart. Grieve to his heart. It grieved his heart. But it says, in the day God created man, talking about Adam and Eve, in the likeness of God made he him and blessed them. He blessed them. He wanted them to bring forth of this seed, of this kind, of this spirit, of this way, of this of this. The, 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 God sent forth the spirit of his son in you, crying, Abba, Father. It, he, will, he does always those please, things that please the Father. That relationship is secure, and we enter into it. I write these things that we might have fellowship with you, and truly our fellowship is with the, God, with the Father and with his son. We enter into that. But you don't enter into the ark if it's, if it's not after his kind. Well, I mean, you could say, you could sit here and go, you know, I know for sure I'm after his kind. Or you could say, I know for sure I'm not. Well, we can fix that, right? You know, we can start, you know, we can get you on that path going after Jesus instead of the things of the world or this or that or whatever. There's a song that they sing at CMI, Reveal Your Son in Me. You know. Excuse me if I say this. It doesn't say reveal the finished work in me. It says reveal the son, the person. And if you need him revealed in you, then it's not finished until he's revealed in you. So may it be Christ revealed in me. All right, so let me jump again because I didn't realize I had uh, done this in separate places. All right, so this is the end. I'll, I'll leave this with you, okay? This is uh, the end of the, our sharing on uh, Noah and uh, well I'll, I'll hit you with another scripture but this is the end of our sharing on Noah and this was the end of my sharing uh, on Noah and I'll share tonight on a different subject but if you hadn't really made any progress if you're still dull if you're still out of it then crank it up a little bit in your heart crank it up Lord, reveal your son in me. Lord, not I, but Christ. Lord, all the things that we, our doctrines are correct. <clears throat> all right. James chapter 1. And hopefully this is the last scripture we'll deal with. James chapter 1. And we'll look at uh, verse 18. Of his own will begat he us with the word of truth that we should be a kind of first fruits of his creatures. Wherefore, my beloved brethren, 
Let every man be swift to hear, slow to speak, slow to wrath, for the wrath of man worketh not the righteousness of God. The scriptures are telling us that we are after the kind of the first fruit. We're a kind of first fruit. We are after the kind of a first fruit. And that's why he can call us beloved brethren. I wrote, this is, this is because Jesus is the seed that follows the order and brings forth after God's kind. That's who this is. That's the kind that the Father wants. He wants His Son, but He wants Him in us, and He wants Him living and manifesting in us. And He says, maybe you can't read this in the Scripture. It says, He says, to this end we were saved. Of His own will begat He us with the word of truth that just begatting us, just saving us, not it. That's moving on. Begat us with the word of truth. Just knowing the word of truth is not it. Being saved and knowing the word of truth is not it. That we should be a kind. We should be after the kind of the first fruit himself. He is the first fruit. You know that, don't you? He is the first fruit. It's the same, it's the vegetable version of, or, or the plant version of being the firstborn. And, and Romans 8, 20, 28, I think, um, talks about him being the firstborn, him being the firstborn, that we would be conformed to the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn, okay, the first fruits. And then he says, we're that, if we go with what we've read before, we're that to multiply and to bring forth after his kind. Okay, why were you born again? Why do you know the word of truth? That the, you might be after his kind by the firstborn, so that, the, so that he can be multiplied and we can bring forth after his kind. Okay. That, we might, that we might be a kind, of, not do. You don't focus on the doing part. You focus on being. That we might be something, not do something. And this is clear. Okay, so let's get specific now. That we might be swift to hear. Swift to hear. Slow to speak. All right? And he's not talking like, you know, everybody talk like a Texan. That we talk real slow. He's talking about Hold up there, Skippy. Don't jump right in all the time. Just let this, let the Spirit of God brood upon, upon the face of the waters with inside of you, the waters of the Word, and see beyond the evident. And, and don't just read over like, and he was grieved at his heart. Don't read over that and that not be, that not just literally be like the arm of the Spirit reaching out of your Bible and grabbing you by the throat, as it were, the shirt and collar and saying, do you hear what this is doing to God? Give him his son. <clears throat> Swift to hear. Slow to speak. Slow to wrath. Because you're lambs. I have, what did it say also in Romans 8? And also, you know, all, but, but before the one I just quoted a while ago, um, that behold, I send you forth as lambs for the slaughter. 
Well, why am I being slaughtered? It ain't fair. It's not right. Why? Well, it's because he sent you for us. That's why. Because that's what he sent you for, Paul. That spirit, his spirit, his multiply. He, he sends you forth. Go. Go forth and multiply and bring forth after my kind. And you, you see that with, you see that with Noah. He gets off the ark and the first thing he does is says, get these cows out of here. No. He, first thing he says is, boys, why aren't y'all, you know. He, first thing he does he doesn't even say. He was slow to speak. He goes over and he builds an altar. He says, I'm going to give you the lamb. And uh, for God, do you know how long it had been since all flesh had been multiplying on the earth and nothing but flesh and everything? And then they're in the ark and it's all messy and stinky. And then all of a sudden, for the first time in a long time, he gets a sweet savor. It says that, the sweet savor of the sacrifice, the lamb that is slain, that is given. And he's like, see, we, we never see him, do we? But he's up there. If it says it was a sweet savor to him, it means he's up there going, oh, this, this is so good. <laughs> it's been so long. But we, oh no, we just read the, it was a sweet savor to God, and, da, 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 and we just move on. We Everything was move on and get deeper and no more, but never really go into his heart and just say, you know, everything came from your heart. I want to know from the source what's going on and not just by the manifestation of, you know, cows and horses and stuff like that and buildings and rivers and, you know, all that means, you know, you want a real river? And there's where you're going to find it. <coughs> so, so Noah gets out of that ark, and he knows exactly, exactly what God needed. Not just wanted, because see, this isn't like, a, I got to have something or whatever. It's like, I, I have things that I desire, but I'm not going to just tell them to you. If you don't get to know me, and I don't, I don't mean know <laughs> Jesus in terms of all the things he did for salvation, to know the real, actual God that actually exists right now, the same one, the same exact, God, the same exact Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit that was there with Noah. They haven't changed one bit. They're exactly the same. And we're in the shoes of Noah right now. We are. We are. We, we are. We're either corrupting his way or we're working towards, towards that sweet savor. And Noah did understand that. And after all that he went through and all that went on and all of the hardships that were in there, and you can't imagine the different things that, you know, you can't imagine, I can't imagine the different things that must have come up and that are issues and, you know, well, we need to, well, we're going to just have to, you know, you know I mean, it really is. It's like that. There's constant junk coming up. Wait till you get your own ark. You'll find out, right, Ben? <laughs> there is so much stuff, and it's constant, and it never, it never lets up. But Noah is like in the middle of all that, and when he gets out, he doesn't, he doesn't drop the plank and go, I'm out of here, and just take off running. And there he goes. <laughs> Bye, Dad. <laughs> You know, he does drop down. He builds an altar and he makes an altar and he takes of the clean animals and he offers to God not a sin offering because it wasn't. It was a sweet savor. 
You do know in the Bible there's two kinds of offerings. There's sin offerings that relate to sin and trespass offerings. And there's sweet savor offerings that is just to bless him. And so he's thinking, I want to bless you with the Spirit of Christ. I want to bless you with your son. I want to give you true lamb. And that's where you see the Father. You see him. You can see him if you see him. If you can see him by the Spirit, you see it being a sweet savor. And, and he's just taking it in. He's going, that represents my given son. He lays down his life just to please me. Just, ju he just gives himself fully to me, and it blesses me, and he does it in such a right spirit and everything. And, and this is wonderful. This is wonderful. This is not just a new creation for you. It's for me, too. Hallelujah. And then it talks about righteousness here. What is it? Uh, for the wrath of man worketh not the righteousness of God. And this is the closing. Righteousness with God is based on eating lamb or offering lamb, not releasing violence going against him, going against this being of different kinds and always everything's an issue of kind. Well, I like this. Well, I like this. Well, I want to do it this way. Well, I don't think that's the right way. I mean, I've studied this area for years, so I know more than everybody. No, I mean, I, that's violence in his mind because it's not lamb-like. And we've all done that. We've all done it. We've all done it a bunch. We have. And there's no, there, you know, nothing wrong with admitting that. The, what's wrong is if we don't admit that and then go, you know what? I want my righteousness to be the lamb, the offered lamb, the given lamb. So let's pray. Hallelujah. Father, you have been more than generous to us during this Noah time. And you were amazing how you separated us out from the known world and brought, brought us into an ark, a, a place, a place where our daily lives are not the same as they were. You have brought us here to make us realize the true, the deep, 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 deep desire of your heart. <coughs> the true desire and how deep it is is seen in when you are not receiving that from us. You, we're not giving that to you. The depth of the grieving all the way to your heart. But it's also putting us in situations where we're unfamiliar, where we could see new, not really new problems in us, but see them for what they are. And even if nothing manifested through us, we know that we saw it, we saw it, and you saw it. And Father, we... We were born, we were born to be a kind of first fruits after your kind, Jesus. We were born again for that. We were born for it, and then you brought us all the way to this point, and we're born again for it, and you brought us all the way to this point, and we're begotten in the family. So-and-so beget so-and-so beget so-and-so of whom came the Christ. We are begotten. We're begotten, not just born. Everyone was born, but every, the people in the Bible that were of the generation of Jesus Christ were begotten. 
but that wasn't enough until he comes forth. Mm. They lived to bring him forth. They existed because they were going to be part of what brings him forth. Mm. And so, Father, we, we humbly ask you, teach us, help us, move on us by your Spirit to not approach the Word of God as another lesson, another teaching that we can put a notch on our belt and say, I've got that down. But to approach you, your heart. You're the author and the finisher, Jesus. To approach you, to say, to, to see things like do you smell the sweet fragrance or this grieves you to your heart and to go to you and say, help me to understand you, not the scripture that says that. May my heart be single. May it be a compass that regardless of what comes along, I will not be drawn away from your heart to know you, to know you to your <coughs> depths. And not to do that for any sort of gain to myself in, in terms of being deep and in terms of being able to share things that impress people, but rather that we just can sit at your feet like Mary did. Take in your word and and as we saw later, she, she took in more than your word. She got your heart. And then she came back and poured out on you instead of asking you to pour into her. She poured out on you. And you responded. You responded. You were touched deeply. Oh, Father. And her heart was made joyful, not because she got something from sitting at your feet that was so good or so impressive, but because she stood with you in a certain way in your death that was going to happen days later. That sent him off with her in your heart, Jesus. Sent, that you were sent off with the, what she did and you said it would everywhere this gospel is preached this would be told to others we're supposed to be that kind we're supposed to be a kind of first fruits we're supposed to be that to you we're so religious we're so full of ourselves we're so wrongly motivated in so many ways. So what is our hope if we're that far off? If you have to, drag us into the ark. <coughs> drag us into the ark. And there, with all the mess and all the troubles that are there, teach us the life that is our life. Reveal this, the kind that we are. His name is Jesus, Lamb of God. Reveal Him in us, not in some time of, of reading the Bible alone, not just that, but being revealed in us as we tend to the madness going on in the ark much harder than the life they had outside the ark. And in every situation, slow to speak, swift to hear, slow to wrath, showing that we are the kind that you want. Mm. 
And Father, we ask, we ask, we ask if it please you that when the door drops and the light of the new creation shines brightly that we step into that with all of the same spirit that it has, clean and, and untouched and un, that we can be like that and that we can go and multiply we can we can bring forth after the kind father of the son the seeds that you put in us for you said i will make my covenant with you and your seed after you we ask in jesus name